I would like to move into a world where sincerity is rewarded. Wouldn't you? If you wouldn't, or if you don't consider any of this ever, then maybe this isn't for you. But if you do ask yourself sometimes, hey, is that person ever going to apologize for chastising me over something that I was just sharing out of sincerity? Not sharing because I think I'm right all the time and I know exactly what I'm talking about, but just sharing from a place of exploration, of wondering about how the world works. There's nothing wrong with asking those questions, right? There's nothing wrong with wondering about how, how things truly are. And if you are waiting for someone to apologize, you have to ask yourself, why? What do you expect? Do you expect them to have some kind of paradigm shift in their thinking? Do you expect way too much, basically, of this person who wasn't able to just allow you to have your thoughts at that moment? And what's wild to me is that we get attached to those thoughts in the views of certain people. That we get, um, whatever we say, we are our like ball and chain we're stuck to. We believe it 100%, even though it's just an idea we had. It's just a thought we had. It's just a question we were asking. Um, why is it that that happens? Why do we see just a passing thought as being an indicator of who someone is? And if you are that type of person, again, we've all been that type of person, <laughs> actually. Not again. No, again. We've all been that person, haven't we? I mean, a lot of us. I've thought some way about someone and not let them change in my view of who they are in my mind. And what good does that do? If you're going to have an issue with someone, if someone is creating a block in that way, why not just, just let that go? Because what are you going to change? Did you want to be cajoled out of what you were saying? Did you want your view to be edited? Because that's how people will feel. They'll feel like you are trying to edit who they are because people there are people who do view what they say as being who they are. They are taking all of their own thoughts as being a part of their personality. But if you're a type of person like me who feels like you're, who you are is ever changing, is unknowable, is impossible to put a finger on, then, I mean, you're gonna hit, oh, let me change hands. Yeah, those, those are gonna be roadblocks. Those people are roadblocks. Um, and it feels as if in order to do something in a noble way, which involves this kind of level of question asking, of exploration, it feels like you have to go through these roadblocks, you know, in order to get to a place that you want to get to. It feels like success is in managing those interactions in a mature way. And I think that it kind of is. You do have to deal with people who don't agree with yourself and you have to agree with people who maybe are difficult for you to work with. And that is a really annoying truth in order to, yeah, in order to, to really, let's like put that thought clearly, in order to reach as many people as you want to reach, especially as an artist, you can't be picky with who listens to what you do, who consumes it. You can't control that. And so you will meet those people. And if you want to do, let's say you want to make, make some music in another city and you don't know anybody and you just see the type of people that you have to interact with they're very politically charged one way or the other what are you going to do right you feel as if you have to interact with those people in order to make some kind of a mark to connect in this community sometimes you have to go into these areas of life that you know they seem toxic or sick or not something you want to be part of but I mean, you're trying to be a light in this world, right? You're trying to heal and connect in this world. And so in order to connect, what, do you just go to places where everybody agrees with you? Where the connection is instant? Is that really connecting? Or is that just some kind of way of feeling seen? Is that part of your own insecurity? So we do have to go into these relationships with people that maybe, maybe it's challenging and they do have a fixed view of us. But what we have to do is maintain ourselves and not fix our view. So many times 
I see people who think they're on the right side and that just instantly, um, it ends all real connection with, with a greater number of people. And they want to reach a greater number of people. They want to be able to communicate and feel connected. So the question again is really, I say again a lot, maybe I never talked about it, but the question is, can you allow others to not be held hostage to their thoughts? If you can, then it seems as if this path gets a little easier and you stop worrying about whether or not you convince someone of something, whether or not really you've like come across as a good person because it doesn't matter. I can't change what they think. That's okay. I'm not here to change. I'm just here to connect. It's a totally different intention. From that, the path again, it just seems so much lighter. And the point is to continue to, to make life easier, to, to, to be a light to life and not to cause more conflict. Where did I start? <laughs> it's a good question. Um, just with dealing with people who you are waiting for an apology from, who have not changed their minds yet, or may never change their mind. Why is it, you have to ask yourself, that someone would view a thought that they have as more valuable than a real relationship? And if someone truly is that lost, was a real relationship ever possible? Or did you have some motives that weren't necessarily in line with being secure and in love? Did you need their attention and their conversation, if you want to call it that, however one-sided it was, did you need it? to feel like you were valuable. It's interesting when you really stop and think about these things, you see yourself in that person. But hopefully, if you are asking when will they apologize, you're at a point where you also see that this relationship could have been something great. And that's the grieving process. It could have been something great. And you have to get through that. You have to stop waiting for them to apologize because it could have been something great, but it wasn't, and it isn't. And there is greatness out on the horizon for you. And it may not be with people who you necessarily would think, which is why it's so important to not get stuck in disagreements over things that really don't matter. So long as you have a strong enough why behind what you do, then all of these petty little disagreements, doesn't matter so long as you're on a mission of, let's say, doing something from a place of love. To me, that would be a very, that's a very empowering and positive place to come from, from a why. Like for me, it's making music and I, do that from a place of love because I, I love the process of exploring something, of putting it together, of creating from nothing and coming out with something that I couldn't have imagined beforehand. And if that means I have to interact with people that are difficult to deal with, then I guess I'm just gonna have to learn how to do that. Because ultimately, what is my goal? Is it to be stopped by difficulties? Is it to be stopped by the grieving process somewhere in the middle of it? Or is my goal to ultimately connect and share something that is meaningful to me? I hope that uh, talking about this has helped you think about your relationships a little bit.
more level-headed and not so one-sided and has helped you kind of clear your mind on maybe someone or something that was unresolved. All right, catch you later.